I'm a senior vice president of engineering and operations at a company called Live Person. If you don't know Live Person, they've been around forever, like 28 years. They basically created uh, internet chat before internet chat was a thing, if you can imagine that. Like they just, they've been early on a number of things. But one of the things that drew me to them about a year ago was actually the fact that they believed in AI uh, very early on. And if you think about early use cases of chat, uh, chat bots obviously were huge, not just for OpenAI, but for a lot of other companies. Anyway, so I joined them about a year ago. Uh, before that, I spent five years at a company named Jamf doing Apple device management and a couple of years at AWS before that. And so I, I share the quick opening of my background, but really I'm, I'm an SRE DevOps kind of guy at heart. Uh, I'm a geek. This one, every single time that I see this XKCD, I kind of laugh uh, because this is how I operate by default. I focus on uh, uptime, availability, reliability. And I'm not going to go super deep with AI on it, but I did mention to some people before we uh, officially began here, these things don't disappear just when we start to talk about AI, LLMs, and the tech. In fact, one of the really interesting things that you're seeing kind of across all the cloud providers right now is a shortage of GPUs. So what does that mean? Well, if you don't have the GPUs to actually power the operations that you're attempting to do, and all of you start to use that functionality heavily, what happens to the products that you build that ultimately talk to OpenAI, that leverage these models? What actually happens if you're relying on a SaaS service for it? Well, all of a sudden you might go from instantaneous responses to things just disappear. You don't hear back. Things start to time out. What does that look like? I'm not going to go deep into that because, frankly, every cloud provider is having an issue with it right now, or at least based off what I've seen. And the only way that you can really get around it right now is money. Can you reserve that capacity? Are you willing to pony up the money to have that dedicated usage? But then how do you scale that? Right? That kind of goes against the early principles of cloud of what do you want to do? How do you scale? How do you not think about it? Just do what you need to do. And so I find it incredibly interesting. But before I kind of like go deeper on that tangent, I thought I'd actually start off with just a fun uh, anecdote, kind of poking fun at myself to some degree. AI is moving pretty fast. Uh, as you can all see, it seems like things are constantly under development. So I thought I'd start, who doesn't love traffic cameras? All right, uh, no, nobody's uh, saying it. Who doesn't love block signs? Uh, so this might be a true photo. But I'll leave it to you to judge here as you go through this. Who doesn't love getting tickets in the mail because you uh, might have violated uh, the, the traffic law there and had a block sign? And then who doesn't love getting uh, you know, a fine in the mail after the fact saying, hey, uh, you owe us a whole bunch of money. You might have done something wrong here. So you can do an amazing thing with this technology, right? This AI technology, LM technology. In fact, you can go to ChatGPT. I happen to know this might work for you and say, would you mind writing me a letter denying the speeding ticket violation? And then you might update it to say like, oh, would you mention you know, a perfect driving record? The sign was obstructed. And by the way, you didn't send me this quickly enough. It does a phenomenal job. Why? Because it's able to do this autocomplete operation of, yeah, these things often come up on the internet together and it can generate pretty good letters. So good in fact that it might actually help you avoid you know, a hundred plus dollar fine if you choose to take this path. So the technology is amazing. In fact, it'll save you money. Uh, you know, you might successfully get out of tickets and preserve your driving record if you choose to do it. But you can do it for a lot of other cool things too. And so the company, again, that I work for, they, uh, they leverage a number of different companies. You can do Cohere, you can do ChatGPT. But if you're actually ever chatting with somebody on the website, like, hey, I want to do a return, uh, there's a problem going on, it usually is a pretty intense operation. In fact, most companies have thousands and thousands of people behind the scenes having to answer these questions and keep up with a very variable number of people asking questions. It's pretty cool if you can just come in and actually say like, oh, the model does a pretty good job of knowing exactly how to answer this. And so if you're the customer support person, instead of having to type this up and take all the time, just click a button and say, use the response. At some point, the user response button is going to go away because it's just so consistent and it's got that good prediction rate of what's going to happen. But the companies just say, automatically answer for me. And I see it actually happening with companies that do this, uh, implement this technology incredibly well. And it's also kind of interesting to look at it in terms of other things you can do. Uh, again, I, I'm not on the product side. I'm an engineering person by heart. And so I like the fact that I can actually just go out to this chat bot and I can say, hey, Analyze, in this case, you can see it gave me a month. Uh, this is something real that I typed up. 
And I said, let's look at the website chatbot. So just the things where people might ask a question to it, they kind of use it like a search on the site and just said, hey, what's the number one thing that really annoys our customer about a service? In this case, they're like, hey, if I need to contact, contact you because I have more than 10 people to book a demo, who wants to contact a human, right? The whole point is you want automation. And it's able to quickly summarize that over a month of conversations and come back to that in a matter of seconds. You can do the same thing for anything. What are the top security issues on my backlog? Uh, what are the other top issues that might be there? It's just, it, it does an amazing job, as you mentioned, uh, to synthesize a lot of different data. And you can feed a ton of fun things here. So I thought it might be fun to just kind of share that. And I'll tell you another one that's been on my mind, again, being kind of that SRE operations person. So anybody else DevOps uh, or kind of operations? Yeah? You've probably been in a war room before where it's like all hands on deck, there's an issue. Could be a security issue, could be an availability issue. And pretty soon, like more and more people start to pile into the phone and they're like, hey, would you help me out? Uh, what's going on? Tell me what, what's happening with this. Who's impacted by it? Five minutes later, somebody else joins in and now it's a different person and they need to get an update. Maybe they're an executive. Hey, would you tell me what's going on? Pretty soon the phone call can turn into absolute chaos. Would it be awesome if you could simply use uh, something like this to say, hey, you're listening to a real-time transcription of everything that's said. Automatically summarize what's going on with this. Automatically post updates out to my Slack room on a frequent cadence of actually what's changing and what's being updated. There's so many things that you can do. And again, this is just one person who happens to be a little bit more operationally focused, playing with this tech and seeing early potential. I'm by far not an expert but I, I'm pretty excited to what I see. So anyway, there's my mini form of, uh, of a lightning talk for you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>